Hello, today I'm going to be talking about how warm different types of yarn are. This is something that I thought there would be good information about online, but when I looked into it, there were just a bunch of blog posts that sort of said, oh, this is really warm yarn, and this one's also really warm, but there wasn't any good data about it, and being an engineer, I really wanted to see some real numbers that uh, showed how warm certain yarns were compared to others. Most of the websites indicated that Quivet is the warmest yarn, and I don't doubt that it's a really warm yarn. It's from the undercoat of musk so it's, you know, they, they live in cold climates, they probably have really warm fiber, so I'm sure it's warm, but, like, websites are claiming that it's up to eight times. Actually, the only data I saw on how warm it is was it's up to eight times warmer than regular wool, and I'm like... That's weird that all of the websites are, are sort of stating that same number and not giving any data on where they got it. So I'm a little skeptical of that. I know something about insulation properties and being eight times warmer is a lot warmer. I, I think that we may find that Quivit is very warm, but I doubt we're going to find that it's eight times warmer than wool. To do this, I had to get a bunch of yarn knitted into test swatches so that I could tie different types of fiber. And I made some of them myself, but many of them came from Catherine, and I wanted to give her a big shout out because without a bunch of her test swatches, I wouldn't have nearly as many samples. So uh, here are the different samples that I'm going to be uh, showing. This is alpaca. This is Alaskan Malamute. So this is probably the softest of the yarns that I've got. And, um, the, I mean, we'll see how this one performs. I'm really interested. So an Alaskan Malamute is a, a dog that's used for pulling sleds in Alaska. So that should be interesting to see how that one performs. This one is Rose. So that's pretty interesting. We'll see how Rose performs. So I think this will be probably a cooler yarn. This is like a cellulose structure. It's going to be similar to bamboo. bamboo I've, I've never actually had yarn um, from a rose. I've had yarn from uh, bamboo and I've spun bamboo before and that's pretty nice fiber to work with. But um, rose, that's a sample I got uh, from Catherine. So we'll see how that one does. Um, silk, I'm not really sure what to expect from silk. It's um, pretty nice feeling. It's not as soft as some of the other more exotic ones. I would say that um, this Alaskan Malamut, which I said was the softest, probably the next softest is this one here. So this is Angora. It's from a, a rabbit. And this is like super soft and probably has the second best halo of any of the yarns that I'm going to be testing. Uh, here is the fabled Quivet. And I have high hopes for this one. This one's doesn't have as big of a halo. It is extraordinarily soft, though. This is just, mm, it feels so good. But uh, we'll see how this uh, Quivet works. And oh, last in the pile is Merino. So this is like a, a really good yarn, high quality. This is going to be my basis for wool in these tests. And uh, it's supposed to be pretty warm. So we'll see. So here's the test setup that I'm using to measure how good of an insulator the different test swatches are. Uh, first off, simple stopwatch. So I'm going to be measuring how long it takes to heat up this beaker of water. So I'm measuring out this beaker to have exactly 50 grams of water in it. And then I just have a little 3D printed cover for it to sort of hold the thermometer in the same spot every time. Uh, this is just a thermometer. I, I just um, have this any thermometer would really work, but I had this one sitting around and it's very accurate, so I'm using that. This is just a hot plate, so what I like about this is that you can control the exact temperature uh, that you're setting it to, and it tells you exactly what it is. So that's just a fancy hot plate that lets me control the temperature of the surface here. And then lastly, there's this very accurate scale that, uh, as I mentioned before, helps me weigh the water. So the basic premise here is we'll have one of our test swatches 
Here's the uh, Angora test swatch. We'll put the, we'll we'll get this up to temperature so it's a very consistent temperature and double check that the temperature stable. We'll make sure that we have some room temperature water in there. We'll put this on here and then we'll put that on there and then the water here will raise in temperature and we'll time how long it takes for the water to warm up. So it's it's a very simple uh, premise. I'm actually going to do a blog post that goes into more detail on this. I thought that it would be, you know, important to do that, but I don't want to cover all of the nitty gritty details on how I researched making this kind of a device and why I arrived at this one. But uh, I think it'll be really accurate. I will definitely measure the test swatches multiple times to make sure everything is measuring consistently. This will allow me to sort of measure comparatively how good one fiber is versus another. And now I'm back after testing the samples and I did test them multiple times to make sure that the results were consistent. They were. And uh, the results I got were pretty shocking. Uh, I expected that the Quivit was going to be the warmest because that's what most places on the internet said and I kind of trusted them. I didn't think it was going to be that 8x warmer. I was, I was sort of doubtful that it would be eight times as warm as wool, but I found it was much much worse insulator than wool. It just kind of blew my mind. Anyways, I'm going to put the results on the screen for you guys and I'm going to look at them down here so I can sort of remind myself. Um, so the warmest fiber was this Alaskan Malumut. That's the sled dogs that I mentioned earlier. So I expected this one to do well, but really I, I thought this Quivet was going to be the warmest. So I was surprised that this one was... Uh, uh, the, these dogs were the warmest, but it, it was the softest fiber. It was just really nice fiber. So yeah, if you're looking for the warmest fiber that I tested here, it's the Alaskan Malumut. Next on the list was a, another surprise. It was the Merino wool. Like I, I knew that Merino is a pretty good insulator, but I thought all of these other exotic fibers were, which were supposed to be warmer according to what I read online, were going to do better, but it's consistently the second warmest fiber of the ones I tested. Next on the list was, well, actually there's, there's sort of three that are all very close together. And these, they're close enough that I'm gonna say these next three sort of tied for third place. So there's alpaca, silk, and angora. So alpaca are um, this creature with a, I mean, they're kind of like a llama, but um, a little bit smaller. Uh, so they live in the mountains. I was expecting them to do well. The internet said that their fiber is pretty warm and these results indicate that. Uh, silk, that comes from a worm. I wasn't really sure if that was gonna be warm or not. I mean, they, they create it as a protective cocoon. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a good insulator or not. And it turns out it is a pretty good insulator. And Angora is from rabbits. And this one was on the internet supposed to be really warm. So uh, I'm not too surprised that it sort of got in this grouping that was sort of tied for third. Now, sixth place out of seven was the Quivet. This was complete shock to me. And I did test multiple times and I'm just, I'm still kind of baffled. Uh, I didn't expect Quivet to be eight times warmer than wool. Like that's a really high bar for insulators, but I did expect it to be the warmest or at least really close to the warmest but it's fifth out of six places I, admittedly I, I picked a bunch of really good insulating yarns so but it's it's in you know sixth place by a significant margin so it's not testing error um i i guess i did try to control by making sure that the test swatches were about the same density they were about the same thickness. Um, there could be a little variance there, but nothing that would get it up to the quality of, or, or to the insulating properties of like standard merino wool. So, I mean, it's possible I don't have Quivet. I don't have a good way to verify that, but I did buy it from a reputable dealer that dealt exclusively with uh, Quivet fiber, and I paid a lot of money for it. I, I really think it is. And you know, just feeling it, it is super soft as it's Quivet's supposed to be. It doesn't feel like any of the other fibers. I think it's real Quivet. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm sort of shocked that it didn't insulate better. 
I'm definitely going to reevaluate this, but you know, from these findings, I I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just clearly from my testing, it's not as good of an insulator as even like standard merino wool. So um, I'm happy to be corrected if if people want to you know do their own tests. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I yeah, I'm just sort of baffled, and I, I wanted to get this information out there because everything I read said that Quivet is super warm or the warmest yarn by um, a large margin. And my tests, I just tried to do the tests and I'm as surprised as probably you guys watching this video that it just was not as good of an insulator as, as I expected. But I want to publish the numbers because, you know, it's my best, it, it's the best I can do. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll start some discussion. Maybe um, I'll revisit this if people suggest this other things to try, like where could my fault be or something. But um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. And then in last place was the rose fiber. So this is kind of like bamboo, I'm thinking, although I didn't test bamboo. I mean, yeah, I should test more fibers. Maybe if uh, this gets enough uh, likes and views, I'll, I'll do another version with more fibers and maybe a new source for the Quivet. And uh, we'll try to answer some of those questions. But this was, uh, you know, super interesting. And, you know, if anybody has another source of um, a website or um, a video where they did something like this that I missed, definitely post it in the comments. I'm happy to uh, be corrected. But my searching, I didn't find anybody who really went and tested a bunch of different test swatches like um, all of these that I have here. And... Um, I'm hopeful that this will be useful information to some of you. Thanks for watching.